chain, break every chain, break every chain. to all of you mothers out there and grandmothers <laughs> and all of you that are spiritual mothers as well anyway um pastor dave is on vacation today um he is taking his son together with his wife uh, on a field trip to williamsburg virginia and uh so we're going to be praying for them for safety this week uh that the lord would bless their time together that it'll be a wonderful educational experience for josiah and uh, the kids that they're going with uh, so pe please keep him in your thoughts and prayers i want to welcome all of you today all of you that are here today in person and those of you that are online uh, those of you that are online we pray that um, things are going better and better as we uh uh, put in our new system. If uh, things aren't going well, if you wouldn't mind just uh, putting something in the chat room and maybe we can get that uh, corrected right in real time here today. And for all of you, whether you're online or in person, if you have any ministry needs or prayer requests, uh, we would uh, really in invite you to call the church office. When you get to the prompts, push zero, that puts you right to the main, uh, the main um, voicemail. And that gives our the main line to the secretaries, and that uh, we would be loved. Excuse me, we would love to be a part of your life and to serve you in whatever way we possibly can. I'm going to take a deep breath. I'm just moving from one thing to the next so fast today uh, that uh, I need to kind of get focused in here. Uh, but uh, anyway, today. I'd like you, even though we uh, have to practice social distancing, I'd like to invite you to turn around, uh, turn to the side, uh, wave to somebody and tell them hi. It won't be long until we'll be able to uh, shake one another's hands and maybe give a hug or two. I'm really looking forward to that day. Um, this has been a long year, hasn't it? Anyway, why don't we go ahead and let's begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Let's rise and praise God in our song. Worship today.
may be seated. I remember growing up, there was a time in my life when I didn't much like my dad, and then there was a time in my life when I took for granted some of the things that my mom and dad did for me. Now, don't get me wrong, I admire my dad. And I love my mom dearly. And on this Mother's Day, I thank God for my mother. But there were times when I took my mom for granted. I just expected dinner to be on the table. I expected my um, sheets and my clothing to be washed and dried and folded and put away. I remember that there were times when I took them for granted. And so many times we take our God for granted too, right? We don't think about all the things that he does for us and all that he provides for us. When things are going good, we tend to forget him. And, and when things are going bad, we tend to blame him. 
and yet our God is always with us. I'd like to invite you to spend a few moments of quiet reflection, thinking about the times when you've taken God for granted, when you've done things your way and not done things his way. And let's bring those sins and our need for forgiveness before him. Please pray with me. Dear Lord, we just sang these words. Praise the Father, praise the Son, praise the Spirit, three in one. You are our God who provides us with all that we need, and you are our Redeemer that brought us back even though we deserted you. You are the God who comes to us and takes up residence in our hearts. You're the God who provides us with all that we need and provides us with the forgiveness and the future hope that we have. And yet, Lord, so many times we take you for granted. We pray, Lord, that you would forgive us, that you would keep us uh, in, keep yourself in, in front of us, and, and that we would be mindful of you and be grateful and give you all praise and glory and honor. And Lord, we pray that you would forgive us. In the name of Jesus, we pray this. Amen. Our God never took you for granted. Way at the beginning with Adam and Eve, he made the promise of a savior. With Abraham, with David, and throughout history of Israel, he kept promising this savior, and he never took you for granted. He sent his son Jesus to suffer and die and rise again so that we might be made right with him. He restored us. And he doesn't take us for granted today. He pursues you with his goodness and mercy. And today, he gives you the promise of forgiveness through what he accomplished on the cross and the empty grave. Your sins are forgiven in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please pray with me. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you that you loved us so much that you sent your son Jesus to suffer and die and rise again, that we might have the promise of eternal life, that we might be restored to a right relationship with you. Lord, we thank you for the gift of mothers who are a reflection of that love as they continually uh, serve us, as they never give up on us, as they uh, love us and provide for us. We thank you, Lord, for the witness that they gave to us as they led us to know you as our Lord and Savior. And so, Lord, today on this Mother's Day, we give you thanks for our moms and for our grandparent mothers and, and for those spiritual parents that nurture us and, and keep us in their prayers. And we ask you, Lord, that you would bless them and bless us as we give them thanks for all that they've done for us. Lord, we pray for our nation. And we pray that you would um, restore us, Lord, that you would re restore the sanctity of marriage and that you would restore the, the, the value of, for the nuclear family. And Lord, that those families might impact how we treat one another and how we live out our faith. And that all parents would look to you for guidance and direction and a model for what a loving father, a loving parent is all about. Lord, we pray for Josh Cromley. And we ask you, Lord, that as he considers the call to be our next director of Next Gen Ministries, that you would guide him. May he seek out your will and your direction for his life. And Lord, we pray that you would bless him and his decision. And Lord, whatever would be done, may it be your will. Lord, we pray also for healing for all those that are on our prayer page, those that we name upon our hearts those that are struggling with ongoing health concerns and those that are struggling with depression or loneliness. Especially, Lord, we pray for Jackie Abrams, Donna Brooks, Sharon Coleman, Carla Hills, Galen Hurley, Michelle Cruist, Claudia Martin, Beverly Rector, Paul Selden, Nancy Stern, Lori Utek, Annie Trim, and Harold Elledge. Lord, we pray that you would lay your healing hand upon each one of them. Bless those that are serving them as their caregivers. And Lord, we pray that you would give them all the peace and healing that you can offer. Lord, we pray for comfort 
for the family of Harriet Elkers as they mourned the death of her daughter-in-law's, uh, her daughter's father-in-law. We pray also for the family of Ruth Meyer who passed away this past week. And Lord, for those that are anticipating uh, the funeral services for their family members, for the family of uh, Roger Gangelhoff and the family of Lee Smith and the family of Shirley Hines, Lord, we pray that you would uh, wrap your loving arms around them all and assure them of the salvation that is ours through Jesus and the forgiveness that he's given to us and that right relationship that he worked and give them the peace that only your Holy Spirit can give. And Lord, we give you thanks for the gift of marriage and we lift up all married couples, but today especially we would like to thank you together with the Kathy and Larry Kuhn uh, for their, as they celebrate their 57th wedding anniversary. Lord, bless them with good health. Uh, bless them with years to come together. And Lord, we pray that you would be with all married couples. Draw them ever closer to you in the model of what a relationship looks like between the church as the bride and Christ, the bridegroom. Lord, all these prayers we lift before you together with the prayers that we've left unspoken. And we ask that you would answer them together with those prayers that we've left unspoken in the name of Jesus who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our first reading is recorded in um, Proverbs chapter 31, beginning with verse 26. And this is speaking of a godly woman, and perhaps, and for sure, our mothers. She opens her mouth with wisdom and teaches of kindness, is, and, and the teaching of kindness is on her tongue. She looks well to the ways of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children rise up and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praises her. Many women have done excellently, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceitful and beauty is vain, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. I'd like to invite you to rise out of respect for the gospel. The Holy Gospel as it's recorded in Mark chapter 10, beginning with verse 13. And they were bringing children to him that he might touch them, and the disciples rebuked them. But when Jesus saw it, he was indignant, and he said to them, Let the children come to me. Do not hinder them, for to such belongs the kingdom of God. Truly I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God is like a child, like a child will not enter it. And he took them in his arms, and he blessed them, laying hands on them. This is the gospel reading of our Lord. And together now, I'd like to invite you to recite with me the Apostles' Creed as we confess our unified faith in our God. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Today, if you're, we're going to be hearing um, God's word as he speaks into our lives, his grace and his mercy. We're going to be reminded of the fact that he comes to us in the sacraments of holy baptism and, and holy communion. And we receive his gifts every day as he provides for us all that we need. And so out of gratitude for him, we bring our offerings. If you brought your offerings today, you can leave them in the collection plate in the back, or you can give online or mail them in. But regardless, we pray that our Lord uh, would bless those offerings, multiply them so that our mission statement here 
reaching our community with Christ can be a reality. And so we pray that the Lord would bless our, our gifts of gratitude and thanksgiving today. And uh, at this point, we'd like to invite the children ages three through second grade to join Bethany in the back and uh, join uh, her for peak as they do a children's sermon back there as we have a message here. And as they're working their way out, we have just one announcement for you today. Hi, Peace family. It's Miss Bethany. I'm here to talk about Vacation Bible School. You know, we have a lot of our key leaders in place, people to run, you know, music and games and different things. And now we need some people who are willing to help get our kids from place to place. Be a guide. So, as you can see, my friend here, she's so sad because she doesn't have a guide. She doesn't know where to go next. Does she go to music or crafts or games or Bible story? She needs you. She was so excited to go to Vacation Bible School and learn about our amazing God. So we need some people that can help guide them. We need for preschool, we need helpers for preschool, we also need for elementary. So go on right outside and sign up and we'd love to get you connected. If you have any questions about registration or anything, please reach out to me, I would love to help. Thanks. You can sign up, you just go right out the sanctuary and take an immediate right, and right there on the wall on your right hand side, uh, you'll see a place for you to sign up before Vacation Bible School, during Vacation Bible School, and after, we need help, okay? And with that, why don't we rise and let's sing together uh, our pre-service, our pre-sermon song. Yes, 
You may be seated. A number of years ago, a U.S.-based company put out a, a classified ad looking for someone to be a director of operations. 2.5 million people saw the ad online and in the newspaper, but only 24 responded. And here was the job description. Hours, 135 plus a week. No breaks. Preferred education, finance, medicine, and culinary arts. No vacation time, and time increases during the holiday hours and no pay. Now those 24 responded not because they were interested in the position, but because they thought it was inhumane, and they used adjectives like that. Insane, inhumane. No one would want a job like that. And the company responded and said, well, there's billions that hold that position. Mothers. Today is Mother's Day. And to all you moms out there, all you grandmothers, and all you spiritual mothers, I, I want to thank you today. And I want you to know that I thank God for you, I praise God for you, and the impact that you have on our world today. Napoleon once said that a mother cradles the world in her arms. Thank you. So today, to begin the message, I'd like to ask you to join me and uh, reviewing our scripture reading, our, our gospel reading, it, the picture of Jesus. And they were bringing children to him that he might touch them. And the disciples rebuked them. But when Jesus saw it, he was indignant and said to them, let the children come to me. Do not hinder them, for to such belongs the kingdom of God. Truly I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God like a child shall not enter it. And he took them in his arms and he blessed them, laying his hands on them. Some of you might remember this, but in our children's center back there, for years we had these sketchings, these pencil drawings that were framed and, and put up in the children's center. And I gotta admit to you that I love these sketches and I would like to show them to you and in light of the, the, this Bible passage, I, I want you to look at Jesus and see how he loves children. Don't you love those? A loving, compassionate Jesus and God. So this week as I was pondering these and I was looking at these, I had them in my office and I was looking at these and a thought suddenly crossed my mind. And I'd like to do an exercise with you. I'm going to rewind these. But this time what I want you to do in your mind's eye, I want you to erase the beard. And I want, in the place of Jesus, for you to imagine a mother, perhaps even your mother. It works, doesn't it? We can imagine Jesus, but we could also imagine our mothers hugging their, their daughter and, and tickling their son and holding up a baby in the air with a big smile on her face. And the thought occurred to me this week that 
Our mothers are portraits of God. Our mothers are portraits of God. So I'd like to build on that thought a little bit today. And being the consummate educator that I am, I, I uh, know that a, a picture is worth a thousand words, but I also know that an object is worth a thousand pictures. So today I'm going to use um, this bag, which by the way, I borrowed from my daughter. Uh, this little children's backpack doubles as a diaper bag for her kids. For a mother on the go, uh, every mother knows that as she goes about her business and goes about life, she needs to take her children with her, and in order to take her children with her, she needs to have a number of supplies in order to care for her child. And so today we're going to unpack this bag a little bit. And I'm going to start with the obvious. It's right here on the outside. But we have a, a baby bottle. A mother feeds her child, right? Right? I've, I'm amazed when I hold a little infant how helpless they are. And I don't know how things are today in the, in the delivery room, but I remember back in the day that when uh, one of the first things that they would do with the child when that child was born, would, the doctor or the nurse would hold the child up by the uh, back, by the legs, upside down, by your feet, and then smack them on the rear end. They wanted to make them cry. Now, why would they make him cry? Well, because with that cry, they would have to take their first breath. It's amazing that a parent, a doctor, we need to teach an infant how to do something so basic as breathe, to take in this life-giving air that we need. And the same thing is true with feeding a child. A mother needs to teach a baby how to eat, how to suck, so that it can take in the nourishment that it needs and once that baby gets to the, the, the hang of eating, we're off to the races, right? Everybody knows what it's like. When that baby was hungry, boy, you better be ready to go. We feed the baby, and when we're done feeding the baby, we burp the baby, and then we go back to feeding the baby. And when the baby's done, then we go and prepare for the next feeding because it's coming. That baby starts crying. And that mother lovingly takes that baby and feeds it over and over and over again. Now, isn't that a portrait of our God? A portrait of our God that is here to, to feed us and to give us all that we need to sustain this body and life, as Martin Luther put it. A parent, a mother in particular, is there to feed their child. In Psalm 145, we read this. I'd like to have you read it with me. The eyes of all look to you, and you give them their food in due season. You open your hand, and you satisfy the desire of every living thing. You know that baby is totally dependent upon its mother to feed him. And you and I are totally dependent upon God to feed us. Now we might say, oh no, oh no. I go to work. I'm the one that does all the cooking. I'm the one who puts it on the table. Everything that needs to be done in order to put food on the table is done by me. But let me ask you, who gave you the intellect? Who gave you the ability? Who gave you your eyes, ears, and all your members that you're able to go to work and earn that? Who's the one who designed everything and put everything in perfect order so that we have a season for planting, a season for growing, and a season for harvest? Who's the one who provides the rains and the sunshine that we've experienced over the, just the last few days and every day? Who does all that? Our God. He's the one who feeds us. So let's open up the bag and see what's inside. Ah. A baby blanket. Some of you know that in my family we have a, a couple of, of new little babies. Our daughter gave um, birth to a, a twin daughters a couple of months ago, a few months ago. A few weeks ago, my wife and I went over, um, our son-in-law works at night and our daughter has four children and so we went and um, helped. And we were ready to help with the night feedings. 
Now, I was holding Ellie, and Ellie was fussy. No, Ellie was fussy. All right, it didn't matter what I did. I would sit down, I would stand up, I would walk around, I would rock her, it didn't matter. And finally, my daughter must have felt sorry for me, so she comes over, she brings a blanket, she takes Ellie from my arms, and she wraps Ellie up loosely, and then she carefully shapes the blanket around Ellie's head, just so. And then she put Ellie back in my arms, and immediately, Ellie fell asleep. My daughter knew exactly what it took in order to comfort her daughter. Our God comforts us. What my daughter did for her daughter is a portrait of what our God does for us. He comforts us. In fact, he even uses that very image of a mother as, as he talks about his relationship with his people. Some six centuries before Jesus walked on the face of this earth, the people of Israel were carried off into captivity. And after 70 years of exile, God provided leaders, Ezra and Nehemiah, to bring them back to the promised land to rebuild Jerusalem, to rebuild the temple. And when they got there, all they saw was this field of rubble where the city had been and a pile of stones where the temple had been. And the people that had moved in, their new neighbors, were suspect at best. And the people were totally overwhelmed facing this uncertain future. And God spoke these words into their lives in Isaiah 66. We read, and read it with me. As a mother comforts her child, so will I comfort you, and you will be comforted over Jerusalem. I'm going to ask you right now, are you facing an uncertain future? Are you overwhelmed with life, with a schedule that doesn't seem to stop? Are you concerned about the political climate in our world and, and the moral climate of our society? Are you concerned about finances or, or future concerns or health issues or broken relationships? Our God comes to you to comfort you. As a mother comforts her child, so will I comfort you. Those are words he's speaking into your life today. And so... With that in mind, I, I have another thing, and I, I gotta admit, I didn't even know what this contraption was. It, it's a piece of clothing. It's something we didn't use when our kids were little, but my daughter uses this quite often with her twins. She calls it a swaddler. And every night, she gets the babies ready and cleans, puts clean diapers on them, clean pajamas on them, and then she puts them in this swaddler and she wraps them up and they're all wrapped up real tight and um, it's like a straight jacket. They look like a little human burrito, right? And I commented to my daughter, I said, this thing looks terribly uncomfortable. She said, Dad, keep in mind, just a month ago, these two were cramped up inside my womb side by side, warm and tight and secure, and it reminds them of what it was like to be inside my womb. Every mother wants their child to feel secure. I bet if I would ask for a show of hands that you all could tell me about a time in your life when you lost sight of your mother, maybe in a grocery store or at the park, and all of a sudden a sense of panic went over you because your mother was out of sight. Every child finds comfort being in the presence of their parent, of their mother. And I bet you can think of a time when your mom went to bat for you, when your mom stood up for you, when your mom stood between you and something that caused some sort of danger, emotional, physical, spiritual danger, a mother will put her life on the line for her child, will she not? And that's the same portrait that we have painted of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Three days before he went to the cross, Jesus was across the valley up on Mount of Olives looking down on the city of Jerusalem he had been watching the people wandering aimlessly around as though they had no leader because their leaders were, were teaching them things that were contrary to what Jesus had taught them. 
He was worried about the people that were trying so desperately to try to earn their way into God's favor. He, Jesus, had come from heaven to be their savior, and they had rejected him. And so Jesus wept, and he, as he wept, he said these words from the book of Matthew. Read them with me. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you who kill the prophets and stone those sent to you, how often have I longed to gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, and you were not willing. Jesus uses the mental image of a mother hand who gathers her chicks underneath her wings to protect them, to keep them secure, to keep them safe, to put her, himself between us and that which would harm us. Folks, I got to ask you this. I'd like you to consider this, actually. Those of us that know Jesus as our Lord and Savior, those of us know the character of God and all that he is, can be absolutely certain and secure in this life. Because we know that the God of gods, the King of kings, the Lord of all, the creator of the universe, the almighty God, is walking right beside us every step of the day. And not only that, but we as Christians are the only ones that can be absolutely, positively certain of what's going to happen to us after this life. We can be absolutely, positively certain that we will be with the Lord forever because He accomplished it for us. St. Paul worked at it this way. He said, For I consider the sufferings of this present time as nothing compared to the future hope that we have. And later in that same chapter of Romans 8, he says this, He who did not spare his own son but gave him up for us all, how will he not together with him give us all good things? For what shall separate you from the love of God? Shall danger, persecution, tribulation? Shall distress... No. In all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. But how can we be so certain? You know what these things are, right? Baby wipes? They go together with these things. Diapers. We know what happens in diapers, right? You know, there, there's a lot of statistics when it comes to, to diapers. It depends upon the perspective of the author. So when I went on online, I was trying to figure out a little bit about diapers and the economics behind it. Did you know, based upon my averages of what I saw on there, that within the first two years, a, a baby has its diapers changed 5,000 times. And the cost is even more incredible. You see, this baby business is dirty business. And this diaper business is big business. The cost is about $750 per year. And that doesn't even count the baby wipes or the desitin that we need to keep the baby healthy and clean. You see, this parent is willing, any mother is willing to change that baby and clean that baby up day after day after day. Because that baby's well-being is of concern to that mother. And this too, my friends, is an image, a portrait of our loving God. Our next passage is from 1 John chapter 2. At the very end of 1 John chapter 2, John writes to the recipients of his letter and he says, I am writing to you, little children, because your sins are forgiven for his name's sake. 
At the beginning of the first service, we did our confession and absolution. And we said these words. If we deny our sin, if we say we do not sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. He will cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And then John, later on in the chapter, says these words, talking to us as though we are children of God. And right in between those two verses, one at the beginning and one at the end, he says these words. See what love the Father has given to us, that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. You see, this cleaning up, being our God is dirty business. Every day, he sends his Holy Spirit into our heart in the form of our conscience, in the form of his word. And he convicts us of our need for forgiveness, but then he invites us into a relationship with him. He invites us to be cleaned. He comes to us in the Lord's Supper, and he reminds us that he is forgiving us and cleaning us one more time. Each day as the sun rises, he reminds us that we are baptized children of God, and at our baptism, he washed away our sins, and he called us to be his child. And this cleaning business is a costly business. What did it cost our God to cleanse us? His very own son, who he sent to suffer and to die and to rise again so that we might be able to be cleansed and to walk with him. So what do we do? Now that we've been cleaned. Well, we share it. You know, every wise mother knows that they need to take a bag full of these supplies. And included in this bag, a wise mother will also include toys. Toys to keep a child occupied while they're in the car seat, while they're at the doctor's office, maybe while they're in church. And one of the things a mother will do is pack books. Books to teach their children. Every godly mother teaches their child, right? We teach the children about the, the, the wonders of God's creation, colors and, and animals, and the order of it all, you know, numbers and, and letters, and how they go together to make words. When I was in Greeley, I, um, early in my ministry, I worked with a pastor by the name of Lambert Gabbard. Lambert Gabbard and I worked together uh, for about uh, eight years. And over the course of time, our relationship grew. It grew from being a, a co-worker situation to becoming a friendship. And then it grew to be something even more. When I took the call to come here, they had a farewell banquet for me. And uh, when Pastor Gabbard got up, he stood up in front of the congregation and he said, St. Paul had a son in Christ by the name of Timothy, and so do I. St. Paul never married, but he had a son in Christ, and his name was Timothy. And as important as that message was and that relationship was, Timothy grew up to be a wonderful pastor and a leader in the church. But that relationship with Paul was secondary to another relationship. In 2 Timothy, we write and we read, and I'd like to invite you to read it with me. But as for you, continue in what you have learned and have firmly believed, knowing from whom you learned it and how from childhood you have been acquainted with the sacred writings which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. Long before Timothy ever met St. Paul, Timothy knew Jesus. Timothy knew the scriptures. And as we read on in 2 Timothy, we understand where that happened, where that took place. He learned it from his grandmother Lois and his mother Eunice. On his mother's knee, 
Timothy learned about Jesus. On his grandmother's, in his grandmother's arms, Timothy was introduced to Scripture. And the same thing happened with this Timothy. I learned about Jesus when my mother would hold me in her arms as an infant and sing Jesus songs to me. I learned about Jesus when I would watch them pray. I learned about Jesus when I was eight days, year, eight days old and my mother brought me to the baptismal font together with my father and made sure that I was baptized. I learned about Jesus as each evening we would read from the story Bible book and as we would say our prayers. I learned about Jesus as we went about our way, driving in the car or riding, uh, walking together or living in our home and how they would bring Jesus into everything we did. I learned about Jesus when even as an infant, I was brought to church every single Sunday to understand and to learn what it meant to be in the presence of God and to observe a day of rest. I learned about Jesus when they took me to Sunday school and introduced me to Sunday school teachers and youth leaders who became spiritual parents for me as well. I learned about Jesus as an adult when my parents would listen to me and give me godly counsel. I still learn about Jesus from my mother. And I thank God for her. And I thank God for all of you. And I thank God that I have a God who comes to me in his storybook and he tells me he loves me, who walks with me and counsels me and serves me and provides for me. I thank God for a God who feeds me and comforts me and gives me security, who cleans me up and then feeds me again with his word. And so today, mothers, I want to tell you, thank you. I want to tell you, thank you for serving your children. And grandmothers, I want to thank you for serving your grandchildren and for spiritual moms who have had an impact on other people. I want to thank you for Sunday school teachers and for youth leaders. I want to thank you for the impact that you have had. Because let me tell you what, you are impacting these children for eternity. Thank you. We can continue with the video, please. Let's go back to that little place where we used to go in the summer days. The lodge by the water still my favorite place and I could come every year and it was Let's go back to that little place where we used to go in the summer days. Thank you.
Thank you, mothers. And thank you, God, for being our God. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to sh shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you all and give you his peace. Amen. Please rise and let's praise God with our closing song. Explain. 